Mike goes to the library to study archival newspapers. This newspaper is supposed to have 60 pages, but pages 24 and 41 are missing. Can you guess which other pages won't be there too? Pages 19, 20, 23, 37, 38, and 42 will also be missing. Mike finds a note inside the newspaper. There's a secret maze in the library leading to amazing treasures. The note shows this map. Can you help Mike walk this path correctly? Here's the right way. Mike walks through the maze and finds this bookcase. One of the shelves is fake. Can you spot which one? This shelf is fake. Books on the other shelves are covered with dust and cobwebs. But these books are clean and the cobwebs around them are torn. Mike finds a secret room behind the fake bookshelf. He enters the room and finds a big safe and this weird note nearby. The safe is locked and Mike needs to enter a 9-letter password to open it. Can you help him crack the code? The correct password is Moonlight, and here's why. Take a look at the hint note. All Mike needs to do is to use the corresponding number letter of each word. The first letter in the maze is M. The third letter in looks is O. And the second letter in roses is also O. And so on. Mike opens the safe and finds three identical gemstones and a note. Oh. Suddenly, the door to the secret room slams shut and the walls begin to shrink. Mike reads the note. Only one of these diamonds is real. Find it and put it into the lock. You only have 15 seconds. Good luck. Oh, no. Can you help Mike spot the fake diamonds? Mike should drop all three stones into this glass of water on the table. If the diamond is real, it will drop to the bottom of the glass thanks to its high density. And if it's a fake, it will float on the surface. Mike succeeds and unlocks the door leading to a secret hallway. Yeah. He walks through the hallway and sees four doors and a beautiful statue in the middle of the space. The statue sings, We came out at night without being called. We disappeared by morning without being stolen. Who are we? Can you guess which door Mike should enter? The song has a hint for Mike. The statue is singing about stars. Therefore, Mike should choose the door decorated with stars. Mike enters the next room and meets a queen. She says, Hello, stranger. I have a task for you. If you succeed, I'm going to reward you with wealth and fame. But if you fail, you'll stay here forever as my prisoner. I want to renovate my kingdom so that all my ten castles are connected through five straight walls. And each wall must connect four castles together. Also, at least one of the castles should be protected with walls. Then, the queen shows him this picture and continues. My royal architect failed to give any solution that meets all my wishes, but he suggested this plan. Do you have a better idea? Mike should offer this solution to please the queen. Now two castles are protected with walls. The queen kept her word and made Mike very rich. Also, she threw a feast in his honor. Unfortunately, not all royal servants are glad to see their queen with a new favorite. Take a look at these three people. Can you spot Mike's hater? Although this friendly looking lord gives Mike a bag of gold coins, there's a snake hiding inside his gift. Mike is observing the royal garden. He sees three lemon trees. Each of them has exactly 10 lemons. 
The gardener comes over and picks four oranges from each tree. Can you calculate the number of fruits left on the lemon trees? Thirty. Oranges don't grow on lemon trees. The queen tells Mike an amazing story. I'm fond of dragon racing. On Sunday, I rode to see a race in a cozy village outside of my kingdom. Five days later, on Monday, I went home. Can you explain this, considering that she doesn't have a time machine? Sunday is the name of her dragon. Mike likes the kingdom very much, but it's time to go home. The queen gives him three thousand gemstones the size of a watermelon. He rents a truck to carry them home. Mike's current location is one thousand miles away from home. Unfortunately, the truck can only carry one thousand gemstones at once. Also, there's a check post on every mile till home. Each post requires all drivers to pay with one gemstone while traveling towards Mike's hometown. But the road is free of charge while traveling towards the kingdom. Can you figure out a way to bring the highest possible number of gems to Mike's hometown? Mike should make three trips of 1,000 gemstones each till mile 333. After that, he will be left with 2,001 gemstones and have 667 more miles to go. At this point, he should take two trips of 1,000 gemstones, covering 500 miles more. This way, he will be left with 1,000 gemstones. After riding the remaining 167 miles, Mike will be left with 833 gems, and he'll still be rich and fabulous. Brad got a job as a chemistry teacher. Wait, who stole his money? Brad found only one person's fingerprints on the wallet, his own. He questioned his three colleagues. Math teacher Jennifer said that she'd been having lunch. History teacher Becky said, "I didn't feel well yesterday, so I went home early." And English teacher Sam said that he'd been checking his students' homework in his classroom. Who is the thief? The history teacher. She used gloves to steal the money and then threw them in the trash. Betty and Brad were walking down the street. Suddenly, they met a weird-looking guy. He introduced himself as a magician and asked, "Do you guys want to get rich? Crack this three-digit code, and the money is yours." He gave them a heavy suitcase with a combination lock and a piece of paper with this riddle: A five forty-eight. In the first line, one number is correct and well placed. B five thirty. In the second line, nothing is correct. C one fifty-seven. In the third line, two numbers are correct but in the wrong places. D eight oh six. In the fourth line, one number is correct but in the wrong place. E six four seven. And in the fifth line, one number is correct but in the wrong place. Can you help the guys? You can use different approaches to crack this riddle. The easiest one is to start with statement B. None of these digits are correct. Therefore, we can exclude numbers five, three, and zero. In statement C, we're told that two numbers are correct but in the wrong places. We can conclude that numbers one and seven are in the final code, but we still don't know the order. Now let's take a look at statements D and E. In both of them, one number is correct but in the wrong place. We already know that seven is in the code. It means the remaining digit can't be six. Then it must be eight. Look again at statement A. Since the correct number is eight, it must also be correctly placed. In statement C, we have two correct numbers, but they're in the wrong places. Since the third position in the code is already occupied by eight, we can only have one option. Seven should go first, and one should be second. Then the correct code is seven one eight. Brad and Betty opened the suitcase. It had fifty million dollars inside. They quit their jobs and went on vacation right away. They checked into a fancy hotel and went to their room to get some rest after a long, exhausting flight. In the evening, they went downstairs to have dinner in a cute Chinese restaurant. But one of the guests is not human. Can you spot who it is?
take a closer look at this guy's plate. It doesn't look like human food at all. When Betty and Brad returned to their room after the meal, they discovered that all their money and gadgets were gone. Oh, no. The hotel security manager asked three guests the same question. What were you doing within the last two hours? Dan said that he had spent all evening in the swimming pool area. Courtney said she'd been chilling in her room with her besties and had nothing to do with the robbery. And Henry said he had just returned from a party in another part of the city. Who's the thief? Courtney, the security manager, didn't mention any robbery, but she started making excuses straight away. Brad decided to jump with a parachute, but he landed not as successfully as he had expected. As soon as Betty found out about the accident, she rushed to the hospital. In the room, she saw an unconscious person, completely in bandages. She asked a doctor who was passing by, Sir, please let me in. It's my boyfriend. But the doctor told her that the patient was a woman. Who is right? It's a man. Look at the name tag on his bed. Brad got well pretty quickly, and Becky took him on a romantic trip to an ancient castle. They were walking around the place and taking pictures, but suddenly, all the doors slammed shut. The guys were trapped inside. Brad found a door with a four-digit combination lock, and Betty found this piece of paper on the floor. Can you help the guys crack the code and escape? The correct code is STOP. Take the first letter of September, the sixth letter of August, the first letter of October, and the second letter of April, and you'll get the word STOP. Detective Callum arrived at a jewelry store because the owner reported that someone had stolen a diamond. He didn't let any customers or a cleaning man out, so they were the main suspects. Everyone denied stealing the diamond. There were no fingerprints found. Can you help Detective Callum decide whom he should arrest? He should arrest the man and the woman wearing gloves. Since no fingerprints were left, it must be one of them, or both. Olivia sneaked into an old mansion to explore it and got trapped inside. There are three ways out, and all of them are dangerous. Behind the first door, the roof and the floor are made of magnifying glass, and the sun would burn anyone who enters. Behind the second door, there's a dangerous doll with knives that can come to life at any moment. Behind the third door, there's a room filled with poisonous gas that makes anyone's skin melt. How can Olivia escape safely? She can just leave through the first door. It's night, so the sun isn't shining. So the first way out is safe. Detective Callum was abroad, traveling by train, when he heard two men arguing. One of them, Hendrix, was blaming the other, Brian, for trying to steal his suitcase. Their suitcases looked exactly the same, and Brian claimed that he had just confused the two by accident. Detective Callum asked both men to open their suitcases. Do you think it was an accident? Hendrix's suitcase is filled with clothes and electronic devices and must be pretty heavy. Brian's suitcase is almost empty, with only a pair of jeans and a book inside. It must be way lighter. And even though the bags look alike, Brian for sure knew that the bag he took couldn't be his. It was way heavier than it was supposed to be. Luna found her cousin Mia poisoned in her room and called the police. Detective Callum asked Luna what had happened. She said that she was walking past Mia's house when she saw that the light in her room was on. She walked to the window to see if Mia was there and saw her on the floor. She had a key, so she walked into the house and called the police. She didn't touch anything so that they could investigate what had happened. Detective Callum arrested Luna. Why?
She said that she saw Mia in the window. But look, the blinds are closed. If Luna hadn't touched anything, she couldn't have seen what was going on in the room. She must be lying about something. While Ms. Virginia Dell, a rich lady, was on her three-month business trip abroad, her mansion was robbed. The security was notified, and Detective Callum started the investigation. There were three people caught on the security camera, and he started interrogating them. Charlotte, Ms. Dell's cousin, said that she'd visited several times to collect the mail. Camilla, the housemaid, said that she had come three days ago to clean the house. Ismail, the gardener, said that she came every Wednesday to take care of the garden. All of them denied stealing anything. Detective Callum arrested one of them. Whom? Camilla, the housemaid. She said that she had cleaned the house three days ago. But look at the house. There's dust and dark stains. It doesn't look like the house has been cleaned recently, so she probably lied. Abigail stayed late in the office because she had a lot of work to do. She left the room to get some snacks and a coffee. Half an hour later, she returned and found out that someone had stolen her wallet. So she called the police. Detective Callum interrogated three people who were still in the office. Noel, the cleaning man, said that he had been cleaning another floor and had never stepped into Abigail's office that day yet. Sonia, the accountant, said that she had been talking on the phone with her mom. Sean, a regional manager, said that he had been in his office flooded with work. Who stole the wallet? No one. Detective Callum figured out that since Abigail went to get snacks and coffee, she must have had her wallet with her. He just recommended she should get some sleep and stop overworking. Elizabeth and her daughter, Ella, went abroad traveling. They were walking and shopping in one remote town when Elizabeth noticed that Ella had disappeared. She called the police and they started to look for the girl. There were three people nearby and they were interrogated. Layla said that she hadn't seen the girl. Madison said that she had seen the girl with her mom, but that was it. Amelia said that she had heard someone screaming, but she hadn't seen who it was. Who should be arrested? Layla, look, she's carrying Ella's purse. Gideon had a girlfriend, a sister, and two cousins. Figure out who Gideon's sister is if the cousins are saying the truth and the sister and the girlfriend are lying. Chloe. E is his girlfriend. Ruby. Chloe is lying. Skylar. Ruby is lying. Lily. Skylar is not his sister. If Chloe is telling the truth, then Lily is lying. Then, Skylar is his sister, who's also lying. So, Ruby must be telling the truth, which contradicts that Chloe is telling the truth. So, Chloe is for sure lying. Then, Ruby is telling the truth, and Skylar is lying. So, Lily is telling the truth. Two liars are Chloe and Skylar, and they're Gideon's girlfriend and sister. Lily says that Skylar isn't his sister. So, Skylar is his girlfriend, and then Chloe is his sister. Scarlett just moved into her new apartment three days ago. One evening, she was reading before bed when she heard a knock on the door. She opened the door, and there was a confused man who said, Oh, I'm sorry. I just moved in here earlier today, and I thought it was my apartment. Oh, oh once again, sorry, and, and good night. Then he left. Scarlett didn't believe that it was just a mistake and reported the man to the police. Why? The problem was that the guy had knocked. If he had really thought it was his room, he would have tried to open it with his own keys. 
Nora lived alone in the city suburbs. She called the police and reported that someone had robbed her house and stolen her savings that she had been keeping in a pair of socks on one of her wardrobe shelves. Detective Callum arrived with the police, took a look at the room, and closed the case, claiming that the lady was lying. Why did he think so? The room was absolutely clean. If someone had robbed the house, they would have made a mess while searching for money. The person who took the money must have known exactly where it was, which is unrealistic. Mrs. Ledger is a high school history teacher. One day, she started a sudden oral test, asking students questions from the back of the book. If the students figure out the order in which she asks, they can find the answer to their question in advance. The first three people she asked were Atlas, Eleanor, and Gracelyn. There are Zoe, Luca, Sienna, and Victoria left. Can you guess who will answer which question? Mrs. Ledger is asking students in alphabetical order. So up next is Luca, then Sienna, then Victoria, and Zoe. Another day, another test. Once again, Mrs. Ledger is asking students. This time, the first ones to answer were Zoe, Luca, and Atlas. In which order will she ask the remaining students? This time, she started with people with the shortest names. There are three letters in Zoe, four in Luca, and five in Atlas. The next one is Sienna, who has six letters in her name, then Eleanor with seven letters, Victoria with eight letters, and Gracelyn with nine. Ellie found herself locked in a dungeon and couldn't remember what had happened. She looked around and saw a door that could have been a way out, but it required a passcode and she didn't know it. Luckily, there was a hint. 1802-3004-0803-2611. She has just one chance, and if Ellie doesn't get it right, the dungeon will get locked forever. Can you help her decide which password is the correct one? Take a closer look. Some numbers have faded away a bit. This is probably because they had been used the most. They are 1, 2, and 6. The only code that uses all of them is the last one, 2611. It must be this one. Aurora came home after a long day at the university and was excited to eat the mint-flavored ice cream she had bought in the morning. But when she opened the freezer, the ice cream was gone. Aurora asked her three siblings who had eaten her ice cream and they all denied it. Dawn said, I'm on a diet, and I haven't been eating ice cream and stuff for a week now. Everett said, Dude, I had my chips. There was no need to eat your ice cream this time. Phoenix said, First, I don't like mint ice cream, and second, I was in my room all day, and I didn't even go down once until now. Who has eaten the ice cream? It was Phoenix. Aurora never mentioned the ice cream flavor, but he still knew it. Her birthday was coming up, and she decided to treat herself to a relaxing day at the spa. During a massage, Mary dozed off. When she woke up, the money she had in her purse was missing. Oh no! Mary had three suspects. The cashier, Erica, claimed, I was having lunch in the back. Catherine, the masseuse, said, I went to the back of the store to get some extra oil. The last person was Monica. She was another customer. She said she hadn't seen anything and had just been waiting for her appointment. Can you tell which one is the culprit? The thief is Catherine. She must have waited for Mary to fall asleep and then took her things. Look at the money hidden behind the oils. Hey, it's time for a hair appointment to trim those split ends. But in this scenario, there are only two hairdressers in town who can cut your hair. 
this guy or this girl? Which one should you choose? The girl, of course. If there are only two hairdressers in town, that means they cut each other's hair. And judging by the haircut the guy gave the girl, it looks like he doesn't really know what he's doing. If a rooster lays an egg on top of this cabin, in which direction will it roll? Aha! Roosters don't lay eggs, so it wouldn't roll anywhere. The shopkeeper of an expensive skincare store called the police because someone had robbed his business. He didn't notice the culprit, but according to the security camera footage, there were three customers in the store at the time of the robbery. Police officers questioned each of them. Michael said he'd been buying some stuff for his pets. The second suspect, Kayla, was looking for ointments and some aloe vera gel. The last person, Rachel, told the interrogators she'd been busy looking for lotions. Can you tell who's lying? Michael is the culprit. The skincare store doesn't sell pet products. Duh. Peter is a rich man who owns a lot of expensive jewelry. One day, he woke up and noticed that all of it had been stolen. Uh oh. He called a private detective to solve this case. Peter's wife Carla was the first one to be interrogated. I was showering at the time, she said nervously. Bianca, the housekeeper who had been working for the family for years, was not in the house. She said, I was cleaning the garage. The last suspect was Barb, the house chef. I was making lunch for the family, she told the detective. Can you tell who stole the jewelry? It was Barb, of course. She claimed she was cooking lunch, but the crime happened at night. A man lives on the 80th floor of a high-rise building. On rainy days, he takes the elevator all the way up. But on sunny days, he only takes the elevator halfway to his floor. And then he takes the stairs the rest of the way. Why does he do this? Well, my friends, it so happens that the man is short. Normally, he can only reach the 40th floor button. But on rainy days, he manages to push the 80th floor button with the help of his umbrella handle. Genius, huh? On a rainy day, Miranda decided to work from home. At one point, she went to the bathroom. But when she got back, she noticed that her cell phone and money had been stolen right in her own house during the day. There were three people in the house at the time. Her sister Beth claimed it wasn't her. I was still asleep at the time because I'd gone to bed late yesterday. Her other sister, Anna, said she'd been taking a stroll in the garden when it had happened. I was watching the night-scented orchid bloom. And lastly, there was Josh, Miranda's boyfriend. I've just got home for lunch, he said. What do you think? Which of these three suspects stole Miranda's money and cell phone? Anna is the culprit, of course. Night-scented orchids only bloom at night, so she probably sneaked in and grabbed Miranda's things while the girl was away. A farmer rode into the village on Monday. He stayed in the village for four days and rode out on Monday. How is that possible? The farmer's horse is named Monday. I bet you didn't guess this one, did you? Uncle Ben's farm experienced a terrible downpour and all but 15 pigs were missing and couldn't be found. How many pigs are still in the barn? If you said 15, you got it right! So, there are three important rooms in a house. The first one is a library full of rare books. The second room stores piles of money and gold. And the third room has boxes full of expensive jewelry in it. In case of a fire emergency, in which room will the police try to extinguish the fire first?
The correct answer is none. Police officers don't fight fire. That's the job of firefighters. Virginia accidentally sent an email to her boyfriend instead of her best friend. She didn't want her partner to see it, so she took his laptop while he was sleeping and tried to delete the message. The laptop required a password to unlock. Luckily, there was a post-it with a hint. History, three. Music, five. Book, two, three, one. Yellow, one. What's the passcode? Each number indicated the letter Virginia had to select in the corresponding word. The third letter in history is S. The fifth letter in music is C. The second, third, and first letters in book are O, O, and B. And the first letter in yellow is Y. The password is Scooby. Green is a college teacher. One of her instructors, Rosie, has been cheating on tests multiple times. One day, Ms. Green lost her patience and told Rosie, If you tell me a lie, I will expel you from college. And if you tell me the truth, I'll still expel you. So what do you say? What can Rosie say to prevent her withdrawal? She should say, I am telling lies. This phrase will create a paradox, because it can't be a lie and truth at the same time. Jane was performing in a singing contest in a famous concert hall. Her singing was very good, and she made the judges cry. But suddenly, all the lights went down. Someone turned off the electricity in the entire building. The contest manager questioned three suspects. Jane's rival singer, Tilda, said, I was visiting a coffee shop on the seventh floor when suddenly it became very dark. I had to use a flashlight on my phone to get out. Sarah, the cleaning lady, said, I was washing the windows far away from the electrical panels. And Frank, the guard, said, I'm so sorry, I didn't look at the security cameras because I had a personal emergency call. Who's lying? Tilda. This concert hall doesn't have a seventh floor. Peter landed in a foreign country. He opened a taxi app on his phone to get to his hotel. Unfortunately, the app didn't work. So Peter just went outside, hoping to find a driver. At the parking lot, he noticed three free cars. All three drivers were eager to give Peter a ride. Which driver should he choose? Look at the first taxi. There's a puddle of oil under this car. Probably not the safest option. As for the third car, it only has three wheels. So Peter should pick the second driver. Alex is an adventurous traveler. One day, he was walking alone in the jungle and got caught in a trap. Now he's hanging on a tree tied upside down. The rope is anchored in the ground. There's a candle burning below the rope. Very soon, the rope will burn away. Also, there's a hungry tiger under the tree waiting for Alex to fall. Now, what would you suggest to help Alex survive in this difficult situation? Alex should sing the happy birthday song. The tiger will blow the candle out to celebrate, and Alex will get a chance to escape. Now, don't complain to me, I just read these off the script. Mia came home from work late at night as usual. She lives with three roommates. When Mia entered her bedroom, she noticed someone had stained her favorite carpet. Mia got furious and questioned her roommates. Jessica said, that's not my fault, I've spent all day chilling in my boyfriend's house. Helen replied, today I entered your room only once to bring clean laundry. The carpet was okay. And Fiona said, I haven't been to your room for ages. I study in the library all day. Can you guess who stained the carpet?
Fiona. Take a look at her hands. The color of her nail polish matches the stains on the carpet perfectly. Will has just moved to San Francisco. He needed an apartment to stay in for at least a year, so he searched online. He found three options and liked them all equally. Will went to check out all three offers one by one. After that, he found out that two of the three offers were scams. What about you? Can you see anything suspicious in these advertisements? Take a look at the sign on the second house. It says that this house will be demolished in two weeks. But Will was searching for long-term rent. The third apartment is on the eighth floor. But that's impossible, because this building only has seven floors. Therefore, Will should choose the first option. Rosie is walking home from her training late at night. Suddenly, she sees a sad young lady sitting at a bus stop. The lady got wet in the rain and the buses are no longer running. Rosie feels sorry for her and says, My home is nearby. Would you like to have a cup of hot tea? The lady agrees. As soon as they enter her home, Rosie turns the light on. That's when she realizes that her guest is very dangerous. How? The lady's legs are covered with wolf hair. Take a look at the sky. It's a full moon. She will soon turn into a werewolf. Rosie arrives at work, so we can assume she survived the night. Unfortunately, someone locks her in the underground parking. She wanders around for a while and finds three ways out. But only one path is safe. Hungry tigers are hiding behind the first door. It's impossible to get through. The second door is guided by a virtual voice assistant reprogrammed to hate people. It threatens to destroy anyone who enters this door. And the third passage is filled with toxic gas that makes all mammals pass out immediately. Which door should Rosie choose? The second one. Those threats are words. At the end of the day, it's just a voice assistant. Rosie discovers an infinite supply of honey. But she only has a one 5-gallon jar and one 3-gallon jar. She needs to measure out exactly 4 gallons of honey, taking as few steps as possible. Can you help her out? Yep, this can be done in six steps. 1. Fill the 5-gallon jar fully. 2. Now pour the honey from the 5-gallon jar into the 3-gallon jar. After that, you still have 2 gallons of honey in the bigger jar. 3. Now empty the 3-gallon jar. 4. Transfer the 2 gallons of honey into the 3-gallon jar. 5. Fill up the bigger jar again. 6. And finally, transfer one gallon from the five-gallon jar into the smaller jar. This way, we'll end up having four gallons of honey in the bigger jar. Rosie goes to a local restaurant. The manager offers her free dinner. But first, she has to solve his tricky riddle. Rosie agrees. Here's the task. You throw me out when you want to use me. And you take me in when you don't want to use me. Who am I? Rosie nails it right away. Can you solve this mystery too? The correct answer is an anchor. Now, Rosie has 26 blue socks, 13 green socks, 33 pink socks, and 12 red socks. She keeps them in her drawer. How many socks would she have to pull out in the dark to make sure she had a matching pair. The correct answer is 5. She only has 4 colors in her collection, so 5 socks will guarantee that 2 of them will be in the same color. Hey, great job! Rosie has 4 siblings, Alex, Sarah, Nina, and Willow. All five receive some gifts from their relatives on Christmas Day. 
Rosie opens 25 gifts, while her brother Alex, only 24. Meanwhile, Sarah opens 8 gifts, and Nina, only 1 gift. Can you predict how many gifts Willow would open? The last name in Rosie's name is Y. It's the 25th letter of the alphabet. Alex's last letter X is in the 24th place. The last letter in the name Sarah is H. It's the 8th letter of the alphabet. And so on. Similar odd logic also works for Willow. The letter W is 23rd. Therefore, she will open 23 gifts. Now, if I were Sarah, I might complain about only getting a third of the gifts her siblings get. But I'm not. Rosie is looking through her granny's pictures. Suddenly, she gets chills because she noticed a time traveler among these party guys. Can you spot this person too? This picture is from the 70s, but this guy on the left has a modern cell phone in his pocket. He's definitely not from this era. Laura noticed a white sheet of paper on the floor. She picked it up. It said, follow the white rabbit. Look around the room attentively and try to figure out where the girl should go. See those bunny ears on that door? Laura should probably try it. But there was a combination lock on the door. And is that a riddle next to it? Laura started reading. The code is a three-digit number. Six, eight, two. One number here is correct and well-placed. Six, three, five. One number is correct, but in the wrong place. Two, zero, six. Two numbers are correct, but in the wrong place. Seven, three, eight. Nothing here is correct. Seven, eight, zero. One number is correct, but in the wrong place. Can you help Laura figure out the code? From statements 4 and 5, we can understand that 0 is the correct number standing in the wrong place. 6 can't be the number we need, otherwise statements 1 and 2 would contradict each other. In this case, looking at statements 2 and 3, we can conclude that the correct numbers are 2, 5, and 0, and the code is 052. Laura opened the door and saw a long corridor. It led her to a large room. There, she saw a man dressed in black. He was sitting on a throne-like chair, holding Cinnabon. Well, 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 here you are, he said. If you want to get your rabbit back, you'll have to do something for me. Laura had no choice but to agree. You see, my wife Louisa disappeared during a performance she attended a week ago. Your task will be to find her. And the man gave Laura all the details. The girl questioned three witnesses. Dorothy said she had gone home right after the performance and hadn't noticed anything weird. Alina said that she had seen Louisa leave during the break with a tall blonde man. And Anna said that she'd been on the phone with her husband and hadn't seen where Louisa had gone. Who knows something about Louisa's whereabouts? Alina, look! During the intermission, she wasn't wearing her glasses. Neither did she have her lenses on. Look at how clumsily she moved. But then, how could she see Louisa leaving with a man? After Laura pressed Alina, the woman cracked. She admitted that she had seen some woman pulling Louisa away, but she was afraid to tell the truth since the woman seemed extremely unfriendly. Alina gave Laura a piece of paper the woman had dropped, but whatever was written there, it was a cipher. Can you help Laura crack it? The note says, at the docks. When Laura got there, she saw three buildings. She understood she wouldn't have enough time to search all of them. She needed to choose the one where Louisa was kept, and fast. Can you help Laura?
look at the dark blue construction attentively. Next to the window, there's the word HELP scratched with some sharp object. After looking around the building, Laura found three keys. She needed to figure out which one of them fit the lock. Hurry up! Right, this is the key! The door opened, and Laura saw a woman sitting in the far corner. It was Louisa! She helped the woman to her feet, and they stumbled away. Soon, they noticed three taxis. Which car should they choose? The first one doesn't have a license plate. That's suspicious. And the driver of the second taxi is the very woman who took Louisa away a week ago. She's wearing a fake mustache and a baseball cap, pretending to be a man. Laura and Louisa should choose the third taxi. But luck wasn't on their side that evening. The car broke down before they could get to Louisa's husband. They had to walk. There were three paths in front of them. One led to a swamp. Toxic gases were floating all over the surface of the water. The second road was filled with poisonous plants. And over the third path, the air was swarming with agitated wasps. Which path should Laura and Louisa opt for? The second. At least the plants can't move. So if the women are careful, they'll be able to avoid touching them. Finally, they arrived at Louisa's house. Once the man in black saw his wife, he hugged her and turned to Laura. I'm so sorry for using such methods, but I was getting desperate. I can't tell you why, but I had to keep her disappearance under wraps. That's why I chose to involve you. Thank you. I want to give something to you, but to get it, you'll need to crack this riddle. An electronics store owner came to work one day and saw that his safe was open. His money was nowhere to be found. He called the police. When a detective arrived, the store owner explained that the key to his safe was on the same keychain as the keys from his truck. Two of his employees, Andrew and Ryan, used the truck and had access to all the keys, but the men had always returned them. The detective questioned the drivers. Someone broke into your boss's safe yesterday. What do you know about this incident? Andrew said, I didn't copy the key. I wouldn't even know which one to copy. And Ryan said, I've been working here for three months and have never entered the boss's office yet. The detective understood who the thief was right away. Can you figure it out? Andrew stole the money. The detective didn't say how the criminal had opened the safe. Then how did Andrew know it? Amy's elder sister, Vicky, gave her this shopping list and asked her to get some groceries. Amy took the list without even looking at it. But when she arrived at the supermarket, she realized that her sister had pranked her. Vicky has encoded the names of the products she needed. Can you help Amy figure out what she's supposed to buy? Here's the first product, it's blueberry. What about this one? Watermelon. Can you recognize this food? That's right, it's kiwi. Here's the next rebus. Can you crack this code? Grape. What about this one? Pineapple. Great job. Next riddle. Any ideas? Vicky needs some bananas. 
And how about this food? That's right, Amy should buy some oranges. And here's the final product. Can you figure out what it is? Lemon. Amy took everything she needed and headed to the cashier. He said, I'll give you a 90% discount if you manage to solve my riddle. Amy agreed. Here's the riddle. If you had three apples and four oranges in one hand, and four apples and three oranges in the other hand, what would you have? Can you help Amy crack this riddle to save some money? Try to think outside the box. Obviously, you must have very large hands to hold all this. Amy left the supermarket and headed home. But suddenly, she realized that she'd left her wallet at the checkout. She ran back to the supermarket, but the wallet was nowhere to be found. Amy questioned three people standing nearby. Bob, the cashier, said, Sorry, I didn't see your wallet. I had the other customers. One of the customers, Kim, said, I think I saw the cleaner take your wallet from the checkout after you'd left. And the cleaner, Nancy, said, Who do you think I am? I need this job to support my family. Who stole the wallet? It was Kim. She's holding her own wallet in her hand. But there's also Amy's wallet hidden in her boot. Amy didn't want to waste her time, so she told Kim, I won't call the police if you give me back my wallet and crack my riddle. Kim agreed. Here's the riddle. Can you name four days which start with the letter T? It was Kim's lucky day because she managed to solve this riddle. What was her reply? Tuesday, Thursday, today, and tomorrow. Amy, Vicky, and their boyfriends Josh and Greg went hiking and got lost. They wandered around the forest for a few hours and found this sign. There were three paths through the forest. The first one would take them to a toxic swamp. No one has ever returned from that swamp alive. Hungry tigers were blocking the second road. And to use the third path, the guys had to cross an ice-cold mountain river. Which way is the safest? The third one. See this sign? It says the river is only 20 inches deep. They can easily cross it. It got dark very fast. While the friends were still trying to find a way to cross the river, their phones had run out of battery and they only had one torch. The river is too risky to cross without any lighting. If all four people started crossing the river at the same time, the torchlight wouldn't be enough. Plus, each person would be crossing the river at a different speed. Amy would need only one minute, Vicky would do it in two minutes, Josh would need seven minutes, and Greg, ten minutes. What's the shortest time needed for all friends to cross the river? Usually, people jump to the conclusion that the fastest person should guide everyone. In this case, Amy would have to accompany Greg. It'd take 10 minutes. Then she would need one minute to come back. She'd guide Josh across the river. It'd take seven minutes. Then Amy would spend one minute to return for Vicky and make the final two-minute walk across the river. In this case, the entire process would take 21 minutes. But our task is to minimize the time. That's why we should find a way for the slowest people to walk together. So here's the correct order. Amy and Vicky cross the river, which takes them two minutes. Then Vicky comes back. That's another two minutes. Greg and Josh take the torch from Vicky and go across the river. It takes them ten minutes. Then Amy comes back with the torch, takes Vicky, and they cross the river together. 
That's 3 minutes. In this case, the total time will be 17 minutes.